Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back once again. My name is Stanky Socks, and this is your review slash recap of Fargo Season 1, Episode 8, The Heap. Well, we've seen Lester has changed. He has become the man that he has always wanted to be. Who would have thought murdering your wife and being entangled in some criminal activity would change you? Let it be a lesson learned at home. Sometimes you got to get rid of the ball. And I'm not, I'm not advocating that, but I'm just joking, just joking, just joking. But anyways, he buy, he gets rid of his old clothes. He, be, he gets a new suit. He gets a new washing machine, which he got with his stimulus money. Yes, I only have a dollar. Did not get a stimulus check. Everybody in my at work has got a stimulus check. They come into work with diamond rings and Rolexes and new dogs and tiger tattoos. Okay. You know what? Stimulus check. Anyways, Lester is a new dude. But he's, you know, and the ladies are noticing. They're like, I like this new attitude. You know what? And it's like, that's, that's sad too, you know. Ladies should notice you just like you for you, not because you're outgoing, you have a really great attitude and a really outlook on life and you buy your ties on the internet and your suits too. I suggest that you do that because I'm um, going to the store and you're trying to find a suit my size, you have to get it on the internet. But anyways, he's Lester's at the insurance company and the hot Asian girl is taking notice of Lester. It's like, I like this new Lester. Matter of fact, you know, Sam has his wife comes in and she's upset. She's got her kids. They're about to wreak havoc. She said, you knew you used me. I let you cream pie me, baby. I let you cream pie all of it, you know, and you knew I wasn't going to get a dime. You going to get my money, $2 million by the day. Hey, boys, take him. You know what Lester did? He didn't sit there like a punk. He grabbed a stapler and he bah, 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 took out both of the sons. And the mom just looked. She was like, oh, I'm impressed. You're a real man. Real man. You stood up to my sons by stapling gun. You know, a real responsible parent would sit there and be fighting. Like somebody staples my kids, no matter how bad they are, we throw them down. Okay. That's what we do in a stinky house, you know, stinky socks household. We throw down when somebody use a stapler gun. So, you know, imagine if it was like a, you know, we take it up a little. It wasn't really a stapler gun. It was a staple, you know. But anywho, so the Asian girl, she impressed. She like Lester. I'm impressed. I'm whew. Lester becoming a new dude. We skipped to Molly and Gus. You know, Molly is still upset. And she's like, you know, this case is closed and and just... She works with incompetent idiots, okay? You ever work a job and you you feel like you're the smartest one there? I, I'm not part of that, you know. But I do work with people that is like, they, they're the smartest ones, right? And they have to work with us, okay? And I can understand them being upset. Like, man, these guys are slow and, and they ain't getting it like I got it. No, it's okay. Fine, fine. Fine for you. But anywho's, well, Molly is feeling depressed. Her... And Gus, you know, they was, she was like, hey, I heard you got this pig roast thingy festival thingy going on with food. And my daughter likes stuff like that. She don't really care about the food. I care about the food. And I know, Molly, you like that food too, right? Uh, not, not to sit there and say big girls like food. Everybody like food, okay? I think most people that I know like food or some kind of food, you know, unless you kind of got some disease where you can't eat food, um, whatever. But anywho's. We flash back, we, okay, we are fast forwarding a year later. Well, before we get to that point, Malvo visits the deaf assassin. He kills a cop, you know, an on-duty cop who happened to use the bathroom who's supposed to watch the deaf guy. And then he gives the deaf guy a key and he's like, look, if you feel salty, you, you get yourself healed up, you come see me. And it was kind of like, you know, like um, Kill Bill, um, volume one. When uh, Vivica, when um, Uma Thurman kills Vivica Fox character, 
and you just feeling raw inside. And then she looks at the daughter, say, look, when you get 18 and you feel raw, you come see me. OK, I, I hope we get to see that one day. Maybe not, though, you know. So anywho, Melvo, Billy Bob Thornton's character gives him a key. He's off. Molly and um, Gus get together. This is a year later. They got married. They're about to have kids. Gus is no longer a policeman. He's a post office worker, which he's always wanted to be as a little kid. He wanted to work that post office. You work that post office, Gus. Do what you do. Anyways, his daughter, she changes. She gets a haircut. Molly is pregnant. Molly is, you know, dissatisfied, you know. And, and, and what I mean is she feels like this case need, you know, that this cold case. So this case wasn't really solved how it should be solved. Meanwhile, going to Fargo, the two guys who look like Key and Peele, but ain't Key and Peele, probably are not Key and Peele, you know, you get my drift. They're still stuck filing cabinets. You know, they're in the, they're in the file cabinet section of the FBI because they bungled this up. And as, you know, one of, you know, one of them knocks, you know, down their board, they see that picture. And they're like, they get rejuvenated and they get that what Gus had and what McNulty had. And I can't say what Vic Mac Mackey had that, he, you know, but, you know, Forrest Whitaker's character in season five had that that desire that can only be quenched by Coca-Cola. No, nah, I'm sorry, just kidding. Not by Coca-Cola, but by solving a cold case. Yes, a cold case. So Molly is making calls about, you know, the 22 dead that were killed by Malvo, Malvo, Billy Bob Thornton's character. And they said, well, we might not get, we may give you a call. We may not give you a call, you know, because of the Patriot Act and all, you know, Patriot Act and all and all that stuff. And it seems like these two are going to hook up and they're going to, you know, the FBI dudes and Molly, they're going to come together at some point before the season is over. Meanwhile, Lester is the man. He has won the Salesman of Year Award. Um, the guy who's hosting it, he is on another show, one of my favorite shows. It's called Puppets Who Kill. You should go check that out. If you like puppets and you like, you know, like Greg the Bunny, but just turned up. The volume turned up way high. Uh, but anywho, Lester is the man. He's married to this hot Asian woman. You know, hot Asian woman. You know, everything is looking good for him. It's kind of like, you know, everything. This is like a year later. And, you know, Lester has the confidence and just the world by his hands. You know, and, and it's I guess it's kind of setting up that, you know, that pride before the fall. So it's like, yeah, you know, Lester... The sniveling, weasley kind of getting pushed around guy now feels, at the first time in his life, power. He feels respect. And I think that's something he's always wanted to have. And now, at a later age, you know, he can get the women that he wants. And, you know, he, the, he can get whatever he wants. And he's feeling himself, right? So I'm feeling like, you know, that there's going to be a fall of Lester. I, I don't feel it's going to turn out well. You know, as much as I wanted to see like Lester get away, um, what I'm coming to the realization that he may not get away with this, and especially at the end of the episode, there's Melvo. Melvo does, you know, Billy Bob Thornton's character, he, you know, he's got gray hair and stuff like that. And he's yucking it up with some people. He doesn't see you know, Lester, but Lester sees him and Lester realizes that, look, as much as I think I'm going, you know, that you can escape your past, you never really escape your past. And at, you know, certain times it comes back, whether you're trying to escape it or you're trying to hide it or not. And that this so-called closed case or this closed chapter is not really closed. It's about to reopen again. So my thoughts on this, I, I, it was more of a slow kind of burn episode as opposed to the other one where everything started to ramp up. But you kind of know, OK, we're getting to this point that, you know what, 
Lester's good fortune at some point will have to come to an end and that every road will be crossing because you already have the FBI agents, you know, like, hey, this is the we missed this opportunity. We're going to jump on this because we've got to get out of this filing cabinet room of just files in this room and we can't be funny key and peel kind of dudes that we want to be. Even though I don't think they're killing Key and Pill. Anywho's. And Molly is getting that itch. And everybody's getting that itch. And Lester, even though he feels like he's on the top of the world, is about to catch that fall. I don't know how. I don't know how his end's going to happen. But it does not look good. Meanwhile, Bill, the sheriff, the incompetent sheriff, He's got an adopted black son from Sudan. What the hell does that have to do with anything? I I don't know. But my name has been Stanky Socks. This has been a review slash recap of Fargo season one, episode eight, The Heap. Till next time. Peace out.